So I wanted to do something a little bit different for this video, and that's to call to attention a certain subgenre of stories that are more and more common nowadays. Everyone's seen those light-hearted human interest stories, usually at the end of the local news, like meet the dog who saved a local cat from drowning, or local kids gets top score in country on ACT test, or this elephant does paintings. A lot of them can be found on the subreddit r uplifting news, which I used to frequent, although less and less nowadays, because the trouble is is that in the worsening economic climate, a growing number of these stories about people winning over adversity or whatever are not uplifting, but freaking horrifying when you stop to think about them for like 20 seconds. I'll show you what I mean. This is the one that got me. Homeless eight-year-old living in shelter wins New York chess championship. 10,000 upvotes. This is terrible. Why is this uplifting? He's living in a homeless shelter. He wants to be a grandmaster. He's in a refugee from Nigeria. He's fleeing Boko Haram. He's won loads of trophies. Where's the... That's the end of the article. Why isn't anyone reporting on how terrible it is that an eight-year-old child is homeless in New York of all places? Okay, I found a video report too. Let's watch. Good morning. Good morning. Tanny grew to love chess after a teacher taught his class how to play. He asked his parents to join the school's chess club, and within months, there was no doubt he had a bright future in the game. <laughs> Tanny Adewumi has taken the chess world by storm. It's deep thinking. You have to, like, understand a lot of stuff. Just last week, the third grader took down 73 of the best chess players in his age group in New York to win his division in the state championship, setting a record in the process. I was the first to win state, like my first, because like my first state to ever go to and win it. His intellect, his aptitude, his capacity to learn chess is off the charts. Russell Makovsky is Tanny's coach at his elementary school, PS116. He says Tanny quickly shot to the top of the class. From not playing until beating the best of us in one year is unheard of, all while living in a homeless shelter. You heard that right. Tanny and his family are homeless. They fled northern Nigeria in 2017, fearing attacks by the terror group Boko Haram. I don't want to lose any one of my loving ones. His parents have applied for asylum and say, even without a place to call their own, they'll do anything to support their son. Yeah, I want to be the youngest grandmaster in the world and beat um, the world champion's record. Oh my gosh. A lofty goal for the eight-year-old refugee. But if you pause just for a second to doubt him, well, he's already called checkmate. A anything is possible. Uh, God... I mean, like God can, he can do anything for for me. He can do anything for my family. As we were, that's it. Where's the discussion of why it's possible for an eight-year-old to be homeless in the richest city in world history through a New York winter? What does that say about the economy and the society that allows this? Okay, New York Times. No, this story doesn't make me want to smile, Nicholas Kristof, you freaking sociopath. I checked tons of other outlets too. None of them even mention how horrifying it is that children are homeless. Where's the discussion of the broken New York housing system, of rent price increases, of gentrification? How is this uplifting? Okay, here's another one I saw. Teen saves money for two years to buy his pal a new electric wheelchair. I can't access that website, so let's read the New York Post article on it. Tanner Wilson, who attends Cadro High School in Norman, surprised his pal Brandon Qualls with a new wheelchair in front of his classmates last month. Qualls, who frequently complains of tired arms from manually pushing himself around his old self-propelled wheelchair, cried tears of joy when presented with the gift. Well, that's a very kind thing to do, but sorry, why does a disabled child not have an adequate wheelchair? The story doesn't even ask. Okay, it's time for you, MSNBC. You know how we like to end this show. No matter what, there's always good news somewhere, and we think good news rules. This one hits close to home. Yesterday, my friend and colleague, Hans Nichols, he brought us the story of one furloughed worker who is so in need of cash, she pawned her wedding ring. But we have an amazing update to share. When that woman's family learned that she sold her ring, on their own, they contacted the pawn shop owner, Angela Huffman, and they bought the ring back for her. That is who we are as a nation. That is such a great story. Her family is amazing. Amazing. 
That is who we are as a nation. Well, maybe, but that's not a very good thing, is it? Such a great story, is it? The fact that an employee of the government is so desperate as to pawn her own wedding ring. Look at the hashtag, good news rules. What good news? She still broke as 85 year old works at McDonald's to care for special needs grandchildren after wife passes away. So this is a story about an 85 year old Wendell Gill that was picked up everywhere and it's about how his wife died in the toilets of the McDonald's that he cleans every day and how the community rallied around to pay for her funeral and to make sure that his disabled children were not out on the streets. But he's still an 85 year old man forced to clean the very toilets that his wife died in otherwise they'd be back on the streets like that 8 year old chess kid. How is this suitable for inspirestory.com? This isn't uplifting news, this is a vision of a post-apocalyptic hell world rather than some sort of wonderful society. That's it grandpa, keep cleaning up your wife's corpse otherwise your handicapped kids will be out on the streets. He's not even the oldest employee. 88 years old and working at McDonald's. 92 years old. 94 years old. 97 years old. I wonder if she's loving it. These people should be retired, enjoying their final years, but it's just taken as normal that 90 year olds are working at shitty fast food restaurants. Stop smiling Fox News, this is terrible. And if you think I'm slagging off the US too much, let's do some from the UK. 89 year old employee says he'll never quit. <sighs> this guy served in World War II and he's still working a shitty dead end hell job to this day. Buster Collins, a 104 year old cleaner, died after finishing a shift. This is a vision of a capitalist hell. Work until you die. These people are not wealthy people choosing to work. It's like a Stalinist propaganda film about what life under capitalism is like. Funny said out here, America Strong, a young man working, going to school, he wants to be a Marine one day. And just listen to what happened to him on the night before his first job. Walter Carr of Homewood, Alabama, was getting ready to start his first day on the job, his first job. But the night before he started with that moving company, his car broke down. So Walter started walking 20 miles to get there, starting at midnight. And he made it to the home he was supposed to pack up, the Lamy family of Pelham, Alabama. Walter, an example for us all. An example of what? A completely broken public transport system. Anyway, the media is full of these supposedly uplifting stories of perseverance. Alternative title, man risks life to be exploited for another day. No excuses. That's the line your boss is going to use the next time you ask for a day off. Let's watch a quick video report of something similar. Every morning, five days a week. Listen to the music. It's like something you put on a YouTube video for a smoothie recipe or a cute kitty compilation. They should be playing a death march, that would be more appropriate. Actually, let's try that now. Yeah, this works much better. Okay, time for some more. Why this inspiring teen went right back to work after car accident. Yeah, I think we all know why he did go back to work. Because almost half of America is totally broke. The half that work dead end jobs like this. Where's the employee protection and the worker rights? Nowhere, comrade. You best start believing in capitalist societies. You're in one. 54,000 upvotes. Let's watch this. Meet the woman who rented hotel rooms for the homeless in Chicago during the polar vortex. From a Chicago woman whose act of kindness kept dozens of homeless people out of the deadly cold. Candace Payne put 20 hotel rooms on her credit card as temperatures plummeted to negative 20. Adding to the misery, a propane tank fire forced some homeless people to evacuate their camp. Takes your breath away listening to that act of kindness. Eventually, Payne and other Good Samaritans rented 60 hotel rooms for about 80 people. Our Chicago station, WBBM, spoke with her. They let them know that people do want to help. They just, maybe they didn't know how to start, you know, and how to, where to start to help, you know. So I'm glad that, you know, I was able to be that vehicle and have a lot of people jump on the vehicle with me. 
Wow, what a beautiful vehicle she was. Payne mm -hmm. says she they want to find permanent homes for some of those hotel guests. Thank you, Candace Payne. The deadly cold, they said. So presumably all these homeless people would have died if she hadn't done what she did. How is this not commented on by CBS or any of the other media outlets that picked this up? Here's The Independent. The last line casually states that nine people have already died in Chicago. Ah, great, so you either pay exorbitant rents or die, and no one in the press bats an eyelid. It's not even presented as a problem or even worthy of note. If only those poor people had been Venezuelan, then they'd have got the media attention they deserved. It's not that there aren't admirable elements of bravery or compassion in these stories, but they can only be seen as such as uplifting if we unquestionably assume the logic of neoliberalism, where a person's worth, standard of living, or even their life has no value whatsoever intrinsically and is only worth what you can get on the markets. Basic human rights, like the right to housing, healthcare, and water, are merely commodities. Therefore, walking 20 miles to your work or still working at 95 is not a problem, but a feature of the system working normally. And the media is so out of touch with everyday lives of people that they think these stories are heartwarming. All right, let's do a few more. Children buy back Ford Mustang dad sold to pay mom's cancer bills 17 years ago. Wow, that doesn't sound very uplifting. Yes, I agree with you, Reddit user Silo. Let's watch the CBS coverage of this. This is effed up. My first reaction is that old joke, why Breaking Bad Canada was never written. I'm afraid you've got cancer, Mr. White, eh? Your treatment starts free of charge next week. Wait a minute, is that literally the same music as the smoothie recipe video before? You want to know the real gruesome twist? The only reason they could buy it back was that the owner needed it to fund her own mother's chemotherapy too. And nobody even mentions this as a problem, let alone a shocking indictment of society. Woman forced to work over Christmas for airline. Dad spends who knows how much just to be with her. 8,000 upvotes. Why is this uplifting? Couldn't she get time off? Shouldn't this be a story about exploitation over a sacred religious and festive period? Children literally wading through garbage in the vain hopes of getting a decent education one day. CNN notes this kid's made $11,000 in just three years. At this rate, he'll have enough money to start an undergraduate degree at his local University of Southern California by the time he's... 74! Why is college so expensive? Why isn't it free like in many comparable countries? Don't ask us, what do we look like, some kind of journalist? Okay, I've saved the worst until last. Brave little girl sets up lemonade stand to help with her mom's chemotherapy. Well, you've heard the saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And one little girl has taken a literal approach to that. Photojournalist Cesar Vasquez brings you her sweet story. Sweet story? Just you wait. Because I want to help my mom. Well, we started this morning around 6 a.m. It'd be a good idea to sell lemonade, right? Um, as a little girl, uh, she wanted to help my mom, and I thought Child that labor that at 6 a.m. How uplifting. So she's selling lemonade, and uh, she's trying to raise money for my mom, uh, who was recently diagnosed with uh, colon cancer. Her mind, it's not... I don't think she really understands what cancer is. She just know mom is sick and um, not working, so she wants to help in that sense. She's been the one manning it uh, for a whole day. You put water and you put sugar and the lemons. I'm really happy that even though she doesn't really understand the full situation, she wants to help. And Wait a minute, that's, that's the freaking smoothie part. video music again. What's going on? Because feeling happy is making me what could be more heartwarming than a six-year-old desperately trying to fund her mum's chemotherapy? I'll tell you, a different six-year-old selling lemonade to pay for her own chemotherapy. Most lemonade entrepreneurs will save up for a new bike or maybe the latest toy. But for six-year-old Jane Poole, she's saving up for something else. Lemonade. Yeah, for her life, basically, to keep her... Um her chemo going and, and keep her well. She's got two more years of chemo and it's more expensive than any of us could have ever have bought. Jane Poole was diagnosed with acute lymphobelastic leukemia in January. Even with insurance, bills must be paid. They're slowly building up and, and Christine being out of work for six months and you know her bills, you know, not all medical bills, but her not working, her bills add up too. So. And if attitude plays a role in fighting Jane's cancer, 
the leukemia doesn't stand a chance. I'll wrap it up and go it like a basketball, and when it's still not looking, I'll throw it into a football and boom! <laughs> into the trash. Dan DeRue, Fox 31 News. Ah, oh, that is just really heart-wrenching. How could anyone see this as a nice human interest story? Any of these stories could have been used as an end to discuss the terrible social and economic problems crippling society. But because neoliberalism sees every problem through an individualist lens, these stories cannot be seen as the result of systemic forces shaping the country, but as individual hard luck stories. And that framework is never ever questioned. There are truly laudable aspects of bravery or determination in these reports, but the fact that the media never ever seem to look past this part goes to show how drenched in ideology they are. Hey, there's probably some way of ensuring you don't miss any more great content from this channel ever again, or a way of supporting it or sharing it with your friends. I wouldn't know about that though.